to you all because we are on the penultimate day. Oh yes, it's the penultimate day. Tomorrow, it is the Questalin Conflict 2022. We will be throwing down and getting ready. And I've got special guests. Look, drama fans, where is he? Production has arrived and our casters have arrived. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. How are you doing? Look, it's Alex. Oh. How's it going, mate? Good. You've driven up from that London. I have driven up from that London. He has. Oh, Alex yeah. is here to help us sift through big waves to everybody. Mr. Fat Boss Alex, are you excited for tomorrow? It's going to be good. It is going to be oh, good. Nightmarish. One of the two. It's yeah, going it's, to it's be a must watch. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's our first production in the studio, and uh, you've just done some really interesting filming. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's how I'm going to That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Yes, that's all I'm going to yes, say. Yes, I did. Salamat <laughs> indeed. Salamat indeed. So look forward to that. 2 p.m. tomorrow, the show will be kicking oh, yeah. off. It's going to be a ton of fun. We have a lot prepared for you. We're giving away chairs, we're giving away disc plates. To the audience and the winners to get a chair each, the winning team. What? Mm. Why am I not in? Okay. I had to ban Nups actually. He wanted to be on one of the teams. Oh, did he? He did. He did want to be on one of the teams. That but... would be a bit cheating. A little bit. Yeah, it's actually illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to explain it to him. He's like, I won't be prize eligible. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going down that road. I'm not going to do that. Who kicked Nups from my team? I did. <laughs> I was the one. The Hot Tub Esports is. We have eight fabulous teams. The Shin Eaters. I saw good. Chris did a tweet, didn't he? Of like a little. Um, a showing of all of their sort of like team icons or emblems. He certainly did. So good. They're really ridiculous. The level of effort they've gone to. If you've seen these. Uh, I don't think you have. I, I think it'd be worth it. We will get into drama in a second, but uh, I think it'd be worth exposing Alex to exactly what he is going to be exposed to, I guess would be the phrase. <laughs> Uh, that we go through and for our audience here if you're not here we have eight teams selected for our first tournament ever uh we have the shin eaters al right this is the pure lalafell sent from heaven on high <laughs> oh my God. they are the <laughs> holy and um, the holy representation of the lalafell world uh, they have appropriate adventure plates, as you can see. Fantastic. Representing the Waz in various different di directions, and all of them are sinister. <laughs> that, broke, that broke one. That's awful. Yes, they're disgusting. And uh, what's even worse, Al, yeah. is after the draw, not only is the, Lala, the Lalas, the Shin Eaters, yeah. in the running, they will be facing in match number one, or number two, actually, I think it's game two. Right. The other all Lalafell squad that is the Lalafellas, the Mafia Lalafells. It will be Lalafell on Lalafell crime, a bloodbath or mashed wow. potato. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so good. They're so good. This game is so stupid. I yeah, love it. It's, it's, it's so good. So, so good. Yes. Uh, our next team that will be taking part is the Grime Scene Investigators. Uh, these are the ones who clean up the blood after oh, the matches. That is cool as hell. Yes, indeed. That is so good. They are here to uh, relinquish, <laughs> re well, to vanquish, I think is what the better phrase for it. Uh, all the janitors. It's going to be a clean sweep. <laughs> I know what you did in your hot tub because oh, they no. cleaned it up. Gross. It's grime fighting time. Oh. I'm not being paid overtime <laughs> for this. And we'll rub you out. <laughs> uh hmm. Interesting. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah, we will have sub icons to back these up uh, to go with them, so you can support your favorite team. Uh, alongside there will be Team Allegan, sent from the, the past oh, in all wow. their glory. Oh, look at that! Yep, that's so good. They put in so much effort to uh, this is get fantastic. In. They did, and they all did their adventure plates falling from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, they are they're the, the like whole. Dropping in. They're dropping in. They're para dropping in to bring justice. I believe Team Allegan will be stepping against the Quez of the Night. We'll get to the ever popular Hot Tub Esports. Hot Tub Esports. Yes, Hot Tub Esports. More interested in the sex than the fighting, I think. <laughs> is how they go. Is so yes. Oh. Perfect. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Uh, and along with the entire team. This, I believe, is the sweatiest of the teams. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is the try-hard squad, I believe. Besides Boyer, who is terrible at video games. As you can see, he's labeled himself as the Affix, as oh. he is well known. <laughs> so perhaps that will balance the performance. 
uh, of what's going on. Uh, That's great. The Quez of the Night from the Unholy Crypts of Revendreth. The vampires are rising, and they are here to claim blood. So good. They're so cool, aren't they? They're so cool. Like, what a good idea. Like, they, they, these are, oh, man. Every variation is so good. It's so well done. It is. Uh, and the final team of our eight is, of course, the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and just leave that. That's, that's yes. just what they are. <laughs> yes, the, the Ghostbusters uh, will be our other team. I'm supporting the Ghostbusters because I love this. <laughs> okay, I, the Ghostbusters are certainly winning points in my book. If they, you ask me. they are. There were two teams that we had to drop from the signups. Uh, their theme and glam did not match <gasps> or did not quite compete with what other people put forward. Uh, one of them was Hawaii Five O, uh, who went with a Hawaiian theme to go with everything, and they tried to bribe the judges, Alex. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. So this is the team here. They tried to bribe the judges by actually being in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> I wish I was joking. What? Uh, yep. Uh, he was in Hawaii, and he sent us these to try and sway the judges. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, in all fairness, that would sway. <laughs> it's so good. I believe he had his girlfriend shoot these for him. Explain God. that one. No. Uh, it... Don't need explaining. <laughs> this is this... All, all he needs to say to his other half is, "I need you to take pictures of these so I can be part of an online PvP tournament." You think so? When yeah. you see this next shot, Al. <laughs> okay, I'm going now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> it's the face that makes it work. It's so tender. No more internet for me It's today. so tender. And then he followed it up with this to summarize it. And unfortunately, our final team that did not make it in, but a special shout out because they did put in the effort, uh, were the Paws, uh, who could not afford to even take a proper screenshot because they were too <laughs> poor. <laughs> oh, man. Or have proper backgrounds because they were too poor to get everyone in the photo and have backgrounds. Uh, so the pause didn't quite make it, unfortunately, because... Uh, I, like the, I like the idea. It, the theme was good. The theme there was, was, there was a couple of discrepancies in there. Nothing major, but, I mean, with such a high quality of people, uh, you can see they had no gear. <laughs> they looked so tragic. <laughs> just look so, so we'll bad. do anything for, for 20 gil. Too poor to care. Oh, wow. <laughs> Have you some gil to spare? You couldn't even afford a comment, just begging on the streets. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shit, I dropped my last gil. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was oh. not easy eliminating two of the teams from the rounds, but it would have been a seven hour stream otherwise. <laughs> it probably would have been. Where we, we would like a break. Yeah. <laughs> we would like a break. So that is tomorrow. Thank yeah. you, Al. It's gonna be so good. It is gonna be amazing. Enjoy so your drama time, my dude. I will indeed enjoy my drama time. Shout chat. Indeed. <sighs> two PM tomorrow, team. That's UK time. Hell yeah. Two PM tomorrow. You forgot a team? Oh, I'm sorry. Who did I forget? Lala fellas, the crystal crawlers. I'm sorry, crystal crawlers. I did forget you. Well, I was going up and down the list. That is my mistake. Don't worry. Al will be very familiar with them. But we also have the crystal crawlers, who are representing their joy to try and rejoin the crystal braves, and be once again under Alphano Alphano's leadership, which uh, bothers me immensely. It bothers me immensely that you would want to be back in that environment. I apologize for the displays in the back as revenge for the race to world first in Germany that I was at, where I continuously messed with the displays in the background. Uh, we do have Sam, who was one of the heads of production in Germany, who is helping us with production tomorrow, and he has decided to torment me by constantly moving the displays. Uh, so we'll deal with that. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. There was a story here that really caught my eye and it was i am a guy from normal goes mythic uh, there's nothing worse hair looking good thanks bro yeah oh god oh god normal to mythic no problem easiest game of my life easiest game of my life should be fine I will say this week we have started Final Fantasy X. I'm currently working on my video for Final Fantasy VI, which we finished, uh, and Final Fantasy IX, which we also finished in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so look forward to those, because we are playing through them to get that full history. Exhausted. Okay. Doesn't look like we need a guild name for this one, which is fine. Okay, so we have a note here about this. <clears throat> note from Bex. This was a story... Uh, that's the wrong story. Okay, good. Bex is, Bex is keeping me in charge. Okay. Thank you, Bex. 
for managing me and not making me the uh and making me look like a fool i'll appreciate it uh is it this one it is okay it is indeed this one so let me just change these names up because these are all signed to our website supporters so i don't want to shortchange anybody because that would be really bad of me angry phil is in here oh dear and viking thank you my friends okay <clears throat> Are we ready? Let's have some fun. Hello, preacher of the chat! You can put your judge's hammers and your verdicts away. Because the guilty in this tale are very obvious. And there shall be no need for the audience to help point them out. You don't pay my sub, brother. You do not pay my sub. I've been a long time lurker, but I tell you now, I've been a thorough enjoyer of drama time. Now, as someone with a bit of an unhealthy obsession with MMORPGs, I, of course, have been through quite the number of events. Right now, I'm enjoying some casual, savage progression over in that Final Fantasy XIV, and my life has been relatively drama-free. But as some of you might know, what especially brings that drama on, what brings it to the boil every single time, is when you make that decision. When you make that decision to start your own free company. To start your own guild. Now, I've recently had to disband my free company in FF after just being so tired of the online gaming equivalent of babysitting that I could not be fucked anymore. <laughs> and I have to say... I am so much happier for my decision. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. Although Alex seems very happy after disbanding our guild, so maybe it's a true. It was the best decision I ever made. You might be wondering why I would do such a thing to myself in the first place if I wasn't enjoying it. And the short answer would be the stupidity of being young. But the short story, of course, doesn't give us the full details. Alex doesn't have to deal with me, that's why. I mean, he's in my office, man. So I will regale you with the tale of how my guild leading streak came to be. You had a guild leading streak? Oh no. How many guilds did you try and make work? And a few of the stories of my six years of guild leading that honestly felt more like six lifetimes. When did I start this journey, my friends? At what age did I decide that I am a leader of men and women alike? To lead them into the promised land. 14 years old. At the time, I was desperately trying to be popular and cool in my school. But what no one knew is the moment I got home, the moment the prying eyes of the real world were off me, I engaged Turbo Nerd. I would play World of Warcraft together with my twin brother in whatever free time was humanly available. I was the Giga Nerd. I decided that I needed to increase my nerd levels though, to become the Chad. I dropped down to the server selection menu. And then I saw the letters that I wanted to find out all about the RP server. Now, at the time, from the outside looking in, RP servers were amazing. You got these, like, immersive things, like people actually acting like they belonged in the world, in all corners of the city, and it generally made you feel like you lived there. This was your home. Rather than just a video game. So my brother and I decided to ditch our dead server and start anew in this wonderful new world. After months of roaming on our own in this little world, we both decided that it was time to join in. To become a part of our team. To join our guild. My brother found a big role-playing guild that role-played Stormwind Guards. The most cliche RP in the world. <laughs> now, role-playing something official had never been my thing. What I enjoy the most out of MMOs is the adventurer feel. I am literally Indiana Jones roaming this massive world, getting the crystal skull and the diamonds and avoiding the rolling rocks of death. So I, of course, joined an adventure roleplay guild. 
Now, it's worth mentioning that my brother's guild, one of the biggest guilds on the server, would fall apart a month after he joined due to roleplay drama. Little did we know, people making a huge problem out of absolutely nothing was a recurring theme on the role-playing world. After trying a few guilds that would all eventually die due to officer drama and people not writing the correct biographies for their characters, I found myself becoming the officer of a tiny little adventure role-playing guild. Our guild leader was called Dootbox, a seemingly nice girl from the UK that seemed like a stand-up kind of gal, someone you could trust, someone you could invest your time in. It later turned out that she was something that role players did not like at all. I was new to this whole world, so I didn't understand when I first was warned about it, but she was what was known in the community as a god mode role player. Now, you may be unfamiliar. You may not know what I'm talking about. What is god mode role playing? Well, imagine you have a sparring match with Dootbox. In our guild, these were mostly actions that you would describe with emotes. Mike punches nups in face, for example. Now, Dootbox, in her defense, claimed that she was just being creative. That's all. She likes the power of the pen. She would use this to creatively write her hunter, gracefully dodging literally any attack that was thrown at her due to her unmastered levels of agility. Let me give you an example. My warrior would catch her off guard and try to shield slam her in the face. She'd then meticulously write how her hunter uses the shield as a jump pad and barrages my warrior with arrows from midair like Lady Sylvanas herself. Now, me being someone who was familiar with roleplay combat would try and play fair, right? So I eventually took a few hits from these kind of attacks voluntarily and wrote my character out of commission for the sparring match to mix in. But this was the first veil, the first glimpse under the shroud of how egotistical and self-loving Lady Dootbox was. It all ended fairly abruptly when I met up with Dootbox in Stormwind the day after a roleplay session organized by the guild. I looked into the guild chat right before she arrived and noticed the guild logo had changed color. Now, of course, it's not a big deal. Nobody would care. Most people would never even notice. And I didn't really care, but I did notice. Since the new purple color ruined my transmog. I had spent a long time meticulously planning my adventure as transmog. And part of the guild rules was, of course, to have the guild standard emblazoned upon one's chest. And this new purple did not work at all. It didn't even fit the guild theme, honestly. Purple adventurers? So as she arrived, I just put the question forward, right? Why change the guild logo color? She got very defensive. Immediately. From zero to ten, with no brakes popped. She was agitated by the suggestion. Saying it was her choice. She's in charge. She's the guild leader. Honestly, who in the fuck... Are you to question me? She said that on reflection, the purple was a more fitting color. I was a bit taken aback by all this. It's just a color change. I'm just wondering why you made it. What's the big deal? So I respectfully, respectfully said, I disagree. I don't think purple is a good adventurer color, but after all, it is your choice. It is your choice. Right as I send this message, however, I notice something about her character. I take a little closer look, my friends. She had changed her transmog. And her new transmog had a lot of purple in it. Her tabard matched her new transmog perfectly. Fit like a glove. I typed another message to a dupe box. Can I just ask, did you change the entire guild logo because you wanted to change your transmog? As I sat waiting for the reply, 
I was removed from the guild. <laughs> Doombox put me on ignore. And her boyfriend put me on ignore immediately when I tried to whisper him. Okay. Not my first rodeo, is it, ladies and gentlemen? This is not my first guild, so fuck it. And I just kind of left it at that. I wasn't going to argue with somebody who had clearly decided to redesign everybody's setup because she wanted to change her transmog. So, this was the last drop. This has been the fourth guild in a row that I would lose to something ridiculous. And I decided, fuck it. Fuck it. Chat, we need a... Let's give this a name. We need a RP guild name. I got out of my chair and walked over to my twin brother. He was also frustrated and had had enough, having been through similar experiences and wanted change. Just wanted a nice, solid place. So, it was time for a brand new guild to be formed. The Twilight... Oh, yes. The, tw the Dodgers. Yeah, after today, the Dodgers will do, actually. We decided it was time to form the Dodgers. What description should I give this guild? I thought long and hard about what I should advertise our brand new home to be like so people would understand what we were going to do. I decided chill, easy going, and drama free. It matched my personality. If I was to think of how people would describe me, I figured I'm a chill, easygoing, drama-free person. And I knew that if I followed my own compass, my own moral code, no matter how the guild did, one thing was for certain, ladies and gentlemen, it would never, ever fall apart due to drama. Because I'm drama free and I'm in charge. I was 14. 14 years old. I was young, I was naive. I didn't understand. I underestimated the levels that the average World of Warcraft player will go to to create a problem. The first of these tales starts with literally the first person we recruited. <laughs> As we only had me and my brother in the guild after getting it signed, we advertised, we advertised, until a message came through. Sick the blood, Conrad. A very, very, very Russian guy called Viking. Now, Viking was unironically the amalgamation of every Russian stereotype I had ever seen in a movie crammed into one person. He would continuously post, as soon as he joined our Discord, viral Russian videos that we didn't understand. He would always tell us that he was drinking vodka while gaming. He would brag about how great of a healer he was. So good, in fact, that he had been removed from his previous guild for making the other healers look bad. <laughs> One of his rules for roleplay, we found rather curious. He said only girls, only girls, would ever play a class in World of Warcraft that don't wear plate because they are weak. Now, we're early Legion. I had never raided anything outside of LFR before. But I was interested in dipping my toes into some raiding after one of our members suggested we should make a little raiding team. Viking immediately was on board. We shall kill those bosses. We shall make them pay for what they did. He tried to force himself into a raid leader position. When we refused, he said, it's okay. I'll raid lead second mythic team. I was confused. He wanted to raid lead our second mythic team while we were building our first 10-man normal mode team. It seemed ambitious, but if that's what he wanted to try and do, that's what he wanted to try and do. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's Vikings going all in, man. Vikings going all in. As our guild grew and grew and our name started to spread, we found enough people for a raid. I'll be honest. Viking was making people uncomfortable. I started receiving messages in the pink that maybe I, as raid leader, needed to step in and do something about it. So I approached Viking. And before I could even say something, he told me, I have confession, friend. Now, as a courteous, chill, level-headed, raid leader, guild master, I thought I should let him speak first. I am not happy with progress of guild. Guild is full of shitters. I would point out here for the audience, we hadn't raided one time yet. Like, not one time. At all. And he made it clear that he was going to be leaving to move on to the biggest mythic guild our server had because our progression was shit. Now, obviously I'm confused, but at the same time, as some raid leaders will know when you have these conversations and the stars align, I thought, awesome. I don't even have to kick him. The problem has solved itself. So I didn't even argue with him. I didn't point out that we have yet to even raid a single time. Once he told me that, I went, cool. We wish you all the luck in the world. Have a great time. Though we obviously thought he was full of shit. We uh, already noticed in Mythic Dungeons, our vodka drinking friend is not what you would describe as good. But in his mind, he was, of course, Gigasaurus Rex. He didn't actually focus on healing, but rather hitting big DPS numbers while pointing out how much damage he was doing as the healer while people were dying. The prospect of him actually healing in the biggest mythic guild on our server was tenuous at best. But time goes on and we start raiding Emerald Nightmare normal mode. We're moving in. I was tanking together with one of our new members I'd grown quite, I'd grown quite close to. A super chill, super relaxed, easygoing dude called Angry Phil. <laughs> what an ironic name. We were both inexperienced, but we wanted to learn and we wanted to learn together so we could be a team. And thus, our first raid began. The trash clear up to the first boss went about as well as you'd expect. We wiped. You wiped on Nathandra trash. Not Nathandra. What was it called? Isn't that... Oh, yeah, that room. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that room was full of dodgy trash. <laughs> you tried to pull everything, didn't you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, lesson learned, eh? Lesson learned. A few wipes, of course, but it did little to stop our enthusiasm of being on our first ever guild-only raid. We were all giddy, and we were shooting the shit in Discord, talking about the mechanics of the first boss and how we were going to handle it. And finally, that countdown appeared in front of the screen. Can you imagine the level of excitement? I have built this guild from scratch. And now here I stand before a giant dragon with a countdown and everybody around me wearing that guild tag, pulling our very first boss. I ran up to it and started tanking. Angry Phil being nearby for whatever the boss would throw at us, or so I thought. The tank swap mechanic happens. Angry Phil just continues whacking away at buttons. Taunt, Phil! Taunt! No reply. I die and get the res. The boss is now automatically, of course, focused on Phil, since the death dropped all my aggro. The second tank buster happens. I taunt off him, as I should do. Thinking the first time was just a weird anomaly, but now he's seen me do it. Two and two together, equaling four. But it happens again. Phil doesn't taunt after I ask him, will you please taunt the boss? All the while... Angry Phil remains completely dead silent. The raid wipes. Okay. All right. I'm confused, obviously. Uh, so when we get up and we're preparing to pull again, I throw a whisper. Of, I throw. I throw a whisper over to Phil. Hey, mate. Everything okay? No response. After the whisper, Angry Phil left the guild. I hear the distinct sound of someone leaving the Discord call, and his character goes offline.
I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Angry Phil was never seen on that server ever again. I would later discover through mutual acquaintances that after this one failed pull and my whisper to him indicating that it was his fault, Angry Phil, the chill, lovable, relaxing dude, flew into a rage about how elitist this guild had become in a normal mode raid, immediately deleted his character, and changed his Discord name. Now, obviously, in a daze as to what just occurred, after one pull on our very first guild raid on a normal mode boss, we try to carry on as best we can. Our helper raid leader switched to tank so we could actually try the bosses. And after a few silly mistakes resulting in wipes, a smile came back on my face. Our guild, the Dodgers, had killed their first raid boss, ladies and gentlemen. The corpse on the floor. With that mix of lingering confusion and celebration, we start clearing trash to do another boss. We're gonna do it. Then all of a sudden in the Emerald Nightmare general chat, we see the following exchanges of messages. A paladin has appeared in general. Looking for a new holy pallet to replace. I am warrior with first aid. Does this count as holy pallet? We could use a warrior, I suppose. As it turns out, Viking had indeed, not lying, applied to the, mythic, the largest mythic raiding guild on the realm. And had somehow managed to talk his way onto the Mythic Raid team. He was so bad. So bad. That he was kicked from the Raid team. In the middle of the first boss on Heroic. And replaced. His performance was so bad. It made him a server legend. For being unable to stand through a single Heroic boss. On a Mythic Raid trial. While you're walking through the cities, ladies and gentlemen, you would see in the trade chart tales being told, songs being sung of Viking, the legendary Russian healer who could not survive a single heroic raid boss trial. Other guilds had stories to sell about Viking subpar healing. I've been through a lot as a guild leader, but Viking still lives rent-free in my head and I think of him regularly. Sometimes when progression raids aren't going well and I find myself on the edge of despair, I think to myself, stand up and be counted. Put your chin up and puff out your chest. If Viking can convince a mythic raid guild to even give him a try, and not just any mythic raid guild, the best one in our realm, you can overcome anything, my friend. You can overcome anything. And I find myself invigorated with newfound courage to push on. I have more leading experiences to share with you. More that I want to tell you. But remember, if you see the name Viking flying around in a trade chat, or you have a Russian join your team and explain to you just how fucking good he is while sipping vodka and linking videos of naked Russian boys riding bicycles next to meteor storms, it could be him. It could be him, ladies and gentlemen. It could be him. Oof. It could be. It could be. I've seen that video. <laughs> I've legitimately seen that video. <laughs> I have seen that video. Oh God, we got another wow one. Oh, there's some raid stories here. I am down for it. I am down for some good quality raid stories. I want to see some more FF stories. Get him in. 21 raiders that's one too many i know where this is going as we know every mythic raid guild requires exactly 20 people <laughs> otherwise it will not function morbidity no drama in ff bullshit bullshit that is bullshit that's what that is FF's a drama-free game. Mm -hmm. All right, we need a guild name. I have no description. Uh, I have no description of what the guild is like. We can assume from the title 21 Raiders they're a mythic raid guild, so they need a cool name. 
They need to be cool. No, not swat wombles. No. Drama free? Oh, come on. No, it's morbid time? No. We need a, tr a try hard name. The Vikings? That's not bad, actually. Salamats? The Vikings. And they're not the hippos. Leave me alone. I can get a hippo after I do drama. <laughs> Although I'm busy, so. <laughs> People are waiting for me. Hello, Bridger, and a greetings from Team Germany. Ahoy, sailor. I'm a really long time listener of the tales of woe that come from drama time. I come to listen and laugh every now and then, and although I have some cringe, cringe stories of my time as a teenager discovering gaming, I haven't really had much of a dramatic time in my gaming days until, coincidentally, last week. Okay, this is last week. My guild is not a new guild. It is not a guild that was fashioned overnight. My guild has seven years of raiding under its belt. Almost a decade the Vikings have been pushing hard against those pixelated monsters. It started out as a small group of five IRL friends of mine that I brought together and myself. We all had our time in other guilds and other games and just wanted to have a place where we could be in charge and call a home. The Vikings started very casually as we all do morbidity Nolltown and i knew each other from school and we're all together in a previous guild where we progressed on heroic in cataclysm and the mists of pandaria cartia was the best friend of morbidity's sister so they came along as well over time we gathered guildies here and there and we started to form a weekly raid team of our own i will admit that the guild really did start out without any real plan it was just that we were friends and we wanted to be together, that was all. We had normal, heroic raids one to two times a week. We took breaks here and there, built up a roster over time. And after a while, things started to fall into place. We found our groove. We were starting to clear things pretty quickly after they were being released on heroic. It is important for the audience to understand and to note that at the time, Katia had taken quite a long break from World of Warcraft. After Battle for Azeroth, they, and I think we all, had hoped Shadowlands would be the shining beacon of hope that would rescue World of Warcraft from the doldrums, and we know how that went. So they decided to pass until the game got better. Now, Katya and I didn't, like, disconnect, as a lot of people do when they no longer play the MMO together. I still played League of Legends almost daily with Katya, so they still hung out with us in Discord and everything, so everyone still saw Katya as part of the guild, just not actively playing right now. After we leveled Castle Nathria and dominated the Sanctum of Domination, we were looking to take the fight to the Jailer, and this time Nulltown brought up something. Guys, look how good we're doing. Look at our history. Seven years. And look at the team we've put together. Look what we've achieved. We're smashing through content. Don't you think that we're ready to take that next step? To move up to Mythic? This is our time. Instead of what we ordinarily do, which is smash heroic and just farm it, why don't we just try out some Mythic? Why don't we give it a go? I mean, you could try. So we took it easy. We know the red flags that could happen. So we sat down as a team and we started to plan out. One, do we even have a viable raid team for Mythic? No longer could we carry like four hunters and seven druids. We sat down and we planned it out. What else do we need? What classes are we missing? How do we fill out the remaining roster to muster a force of 20 Mythic Raiders? Well, normal sepulcher, we smashed right through it. Ready to go heroic as soon as we had enough tier. Why doesn't the Jailer drop any tier loot, by the way, Mike? <laughs> I don't know. We were ready. Nothing could stand in our way, ladies and gentlemen. Then I see a text pop up that I had not seen in a fucking age. Katia has come online. I was conflicted. I made this guild seven years ago to play with my friends and Katia was one of those friends. Katia was more than eager to raid and had always performed well and all, but we had chosen our 20 players. We had recruited them. People had re-rolled. We had 20 people we had specifically gathered for our attempts at mythic raiding. Now, a lot of this raid team weren't new. 
we just fleshed out to a more robust squad. So, some of them, well, a lot of them, knew Katia from Battle for Azeroth. But not everybody. Most. I did what I felt was right. Katia had been online for less than five minutes. And I promoted Katia from friend to raid member. Question mark, question mark, question mark from some of the players. So I, I had to explain to the guild, for those who didn't know, right? I told my guild that, guys, since some of us still need Tia anyway, we could do a few extra normals and heroics, and we could gear up Katia, and hell, you know, by the time Mythic comes up, we might not have everybody, or somebody might be off, or whatever. Having 21 is not a terrible idea. But that was not the plan we had laid out for this team. These were 20 specially selected, guaranteed raid spot people. Why, you dumb bastard? <laughs> Why would you ever do that? <laughs> I'm actually shocked that you've watched drama for this long and you decided to make a mythic raid team of exactly 20 people. That's fucking crazy. That is absolutely crazy. That is so dumb. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you could probably guess how well that went. Here's a problem, ladies and gentlemen, when you're playing with people who know you IRL. On Thursday night, this happened. Morbidity knocked on my door. He explained how bummed out he is. He was so excited by what we'd been doing, about what we'd put together, about what we'd organized, about how we put it together, about how we were progressing, how we were smashing heroic. We were going to try out the hardest contents there was. And after playing like Nathria and Sanctum for so damn long, without even being able to try Mythic, now everyone was hyped, the vibes were good, the team played well together, and suddenly, it looks like we're back to zero. That seems a little... Oh, is this... Is this okay, this seems like we jumped ahead, but I assume it's because people are pissed that the 21st member has turned up. So now there's this air of somebody's getting benched in this team. That's what's happened here. I wanted to argue with Morbidity, but I felt... The same. I'd fucked up. I had created poison in the guild. I wasn't even having fun doing these extra normal mode runs that I had put on to gear Katia. I didn't want to be there. That wasn't what the plan was. And I knew something. I knew it in the back of my mind and I could see the writing on the wall. If I didn't do something and fucking soon, I was going to start losing players. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? So I came up with the solution. I came up with the solution, my friends. And I believed at the time that this would be the solution that would solve all our woes. I made a survey. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Survey. Oh, guilds are never a democracy. Sorry. Mike, below are my survey questions. All right, let's score the live audience. Sorry, uh, audio listeners. Sorry. If you're, having, if you're on your way to work, I'm sorry. But you can rate yourself in the car or whatever or on the train or whatever it is you're doing. Question number one of the survey. How much fun are you having right now with the guild on a scale of one to ten? Okay, so picture yourself in this guild. I need your ratings from 1 to 10. How much fun are you having in the guild right now? Okay, all right. Puppies, all right. Puppies give it an 8, a lot of 1s and 3s. Okay, question number 2 then. How much fun were you having before the recent events on a scale of 1 to 10? So, 
How much fun were you having before I decided to add a 21st member to the raid team? 10. Okay, so it was super hype. Okay, 10 out of 10. All right. Quite a dramatic drop. Question number three. Do you still want to raid Mythic? That is just question number three. Do you still want to push forward and raid Mythic? The answer should be yes, because we even need to recruit more people. These guys are in fantasy land doing something. Question number four, then. The final question. Do you think we should focus on Mythic or shall we stick to Heroic so nobody is excluded? <clears throat> Lol. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> yeah. So, the results, ladies and gentlemen, that actually occurred at the time and not our Twitch chat's result. <clears throat> Most people's fun had dramatically dropped. Nulltown voted that it was a 9 before Katia came back. Even a 9.5. Now he was at a 3. And that our good vibes of our team were now rancid. And I knew that would be the case, as it also showed in his performance. He had gone to be a grey passer. Oh no. The fall from grace down to a grey passer. Now, to the results of questions three and four. Every single person said yes to question three, which was, would you like to raid Mythic? Number four was a little bit more tenuous. It was split pretty much right in the middle. Half of my raid, who shockingly knew Katia before she left, wanted to stay and would be okay with doing some heroics and getting her some gear. The other half, who didn't know Katia, could not be fucking arsed running heroic anymore and just wanted to do mythic. They pointed out they no longer needed loot and it was a massive waste of their time. That's what alts are for, right? Go on some alts. Yeah, pug heroic or just go with alts. Her alt heroic run is usually a lot of fun. A few people made an extra comment as I left a comment box at the bottom of the survey. Oh my god. You left a comment box and you read them. That's insanity. You're killing my fucking soul, bro. <sighs> the last thing you want is people's opinions. Especially on a survey. Fuck that. A few people had noted, as if they had banded together beforehand, that if we were to abandon Katia, we would lose the essence of what made the Vikings strong in the first place. You're tearing us apart, raid leader! I was torn. I had been torn from the beginning. That is why I wanted to poll in the first place. I knew if I didn't act quick, we were going to lose like half the team. So I went after what I felt was right. What decision do you think he made? What decision do you think he made? Any knowers? Kept her, demoted her, benched himself? Oh, we have seen that before in some drama stories where people bench themselves. Yeah, I have seen that. It's a stupid fucking idea. <clears throat> With the heaviest of hearts, I told my friend, my IRL friend Katia, that they were not allowed to be a part of the raiding team. I told them that in the future, we might be able to make a second team and that I would be willing to even raid lead that and progress team one once we had time, but that right now, I cannot make a fair decision. This guild is so fucking doomed. <laughs> It's unbelievable. <laughs> How did... Author, wherever the fuck you are, man. Wherever country you're in, whatever. How did you not know that you needed like 25 to 27 people for a Mythic raid team? And that anybody who was kicking off about this was not ready to raid Mythic? How did you not solve it by going, of course we need more than 20 people? I am utterly baffled baffled that this even got here this is unfucking believable man unbelievable i told her that i could not make a fair decision my friends i cannot kick someone else as they had already put in the effort to get us to this point in the first place 
And the only fair solution was that Katia, I'm sorry you came late to the party. And you were the only person I could remove to get the team back to the 20 that were required. Now, I'll be honest, during the conversation, I actually thought Katia took it rather well. We had a little talk, and they said they were worried this might happen, and said, okay. But then Katia did something to cause the storm. What did Katia do? Katia said everything was fine and left the call, ladies and gentlemen. But what did Katia do as soon as that phone call was ended, though? Because you know everything's fine, right? <laughs> Leave Guild. Immediately. Katia immediately left the guild after the call finished. The messages flooded me like a storm. I was then told that that same evening, Katia was having a full meltdown. Katia believed that a conspiracy had formed against them. And that these newcomers to the Vikings, these non-friends had joined together and now made it personal. An attack. I was called out in front of the guild for not respecting the origins of the Vikings, the essence of the ether that made it work. That I was not treating them as equal because otherwise I would have focused on performance. Performance over who arrived and when. I could have looked at other statistics and then, wouldn't you fucking know it, the survey was thrown out into my face. It was said that why didn't I remove people who were very unhappy in the guild? Because I had all that data now, right? And if someone was very unhappy and unhappy before this happened, they would be an obvious choice to leave rather than somebody who's been with the guild for years. <sighs> Katia then said, Seemingly, you want this to run like a democracy. So, why don't you have a democratic vote on who should be kicked out of the guild? <laughs> oh, I can't see any problem with that. Yeah, that sounds like a solid idea. That sounds amazing. I can't see it. I can't see no issues at all with this plan, honestly. I ask you, Mike, and audience, can any guild leader out there tell me if it is even possible to do this without burning your guild to the fucking ground? No. <laughs> no, it's not. I tried to be diplomatic, though, my friends. I tried to be diplomatic, and I said, Katia, I feel like if I let people vote on who to leave, that makes every single person in the guild uncomfortable. And some people would even vote themselves to play nice or vote for you, or gang up on somebody. This thing turned into a four-hour semi-moderated discussion on our Discord. I pointed out where I was coming from, right? Katia had left. Katia wasn't supposed to come back until the expansion after Shadowlands. So what are we supposed to do? My big problem was that all the people that were talking big talk before and about how this isn't fun anymore and how we needed to do something wouldn't say anything in front of Katia when she was there. Morbidity kept fucking quiet, the pussy. They kept messaging me in private, agreeing on, on his thoughts. Or if he disagreed with Katia, he would just whisper his answer to me privately but asked me not to share that with Katia because they're very close friends. The big problem is that while I know who said what on the surveys, Katia didn't. I did keep it anonymous. Katia could only suspect who said what and was very sure of who said what in her own fictional mind. Some of them were right, but on some she was very, very wrong. Morbidity's sister, for example, her best friend voted for Mythic, but also asked that I never tell Katia that as she knew that would mean she would get kicked. In the end, someone else took over as moderator of the discussion as I was no longer the judge, but I had been moved to the defendant stand. And that actually kind of helped. I didn't have to play both sides. We talked it out. We're adults. We can work through this, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a fucking video game. Things got less heated over time and people started to be calm and make proper suggestions. Katia still talks to Morbidity and his sister on a private Discord channel every now and then. And I join in sometimes and I tell you things are fine. 
I think it might take a while before it cools off completely. Katia said that they're quitting WoW for now. They didn't want the second raid group. I'm still hoping that they come back. I like Katia. And when all is said and done... Wait, is this the end of your story? Your, is your guild going to push ahead? You said this story was written last week. Dude, your guild is fucked. Okay, I'll talk about it in a sec. The guild was made to have fun with friends. I truly wish I could satisfy all of the team. But I know that sometimes that isn't possible. Katia, if you're listening to this, because I know you watch drama. Hi, Katia! I hope you know that we all care about you and we can't wait for you to pl play with you again. Which should be next week, by the way. We're getting there. I hope that someday you'll find your way back to Azeroth. And P.S. Mythic starts next week. Oh, God. And so far, all of the raid team has stuck around and is hyped. Although there is definitely a sour taste that needs to be washed out. Recruit more fucking people. Get Katia back immediately. Get like four or five more people. You can't have just a 20-man mythic team. For the love of fucking Christ. After all this bullshit. Please get Katia back. Fast. Like right now. Call them. Woohoo. Hello, Katia. And explain to you guys who are starting mythic for the first time. You need more than 20 people. Like right fucking now. People need nights off, shockingly. You need different comp setups. You need all sorts of stuff. Please, for the love of piss, recruit more people, not less. You can't kick people when you've only got 21 raiders. Ah, please, I beg of you, for the love of Christ, don't do this. Otherwise, your guild is dead in like three weeks. And you're going to have these nights when everybody turns up to raid and has put time aside in their real lives and they can't raid because you don't have people. Are you going to pug people? You're going to pug people from Mythic. Have you listened to any drama time stories? Uh, uninstall and join FF14. Oh, God, that story kills my soul. You've been through all this and it's all wrong. Every step of the way, this is incorrect. Making fucking surveys. Are you out of your mind? Making a survey. Jesus, fuck. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh, fucking, that's what I... I'm making a fucking survey. Woohoo, democracy. <laughs> Woohoo, recruit, right, Crusher? Alex is here, Crusher. And nups. You're not here, though, Crusher. You fucking loser. You loser. I'm going to go and see Alex now. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of drama time, but obviously not the stream. We have the Questalin Cup 2022 tomorrow. It is taking place tomorrow. I am going to go and build the sets and everything that we're using tomorrow and make sure everything's working and happy go lucky. I hope you all have a fun time. I hope to see as many of you as possible tomorrow. It's good. It's our first event that we're putting on. Really excited for it. Hope it goes really well. All right. So I'm going to go and see the rest of the team. Have a good time. When will it start? It'll be 2 p.m. tomorrow, but we'll be starting like half one-ish, uh, getting things warmed up, making sure things are good. If you're a FF14 player, and you're certainly in the chaos world, we would adore to see you down for the opening ceremony. We're going to have that at the Crawler's House. We're going to the opening ceremony, and of course, the winner's circle afterwards for the closing ceremony. But if you want to come down and be a part of it, love that to happen as well. All right, so I will see you then. It should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. Ward 5, people. Ward 5. Spriggan. See you later.